So let's start with the Bellotti family. Frank Bellotti, class of 1969, his wife Kathy, they love Notre Dame. In fact, the Bellottis found a way to share their love for Notre Dame in an absolutely incredible way by making it possible for an entire family to benefit from a Notre Dame education, a whole family. It's really a wonderful story. Just watch. <laughs> My name is uh, Lucy Okonoko Jackson. I'm originally from Nigeria. We've lived in Atlanta since 1993. I have five children. Three that have graduated from Notre Dame and two that are currently students at Notre Dame. In Atlanta, we met Mr. Frank Bellady that became a family friend to us when he built his 100th Habitat home. I got involved with Habitat because uh, for every company that I had ever been associated with, I chose some kind of a um, social venture that we could align ourselves with. And at that time, we were the first and largest international corporate sponsor for Habitat because we committed to build 100 homes. We were the 100th Habitat home that he built. Because of Habitat, we were introduced to this family, and then the power of education became the next big idea, and, and I realized over time that Lucy was so intent on giving their ch her children a great education. And since then, he's been a part of our lives, and we are just forever grateful to him because he also introduced us to Notre Dame. When I came to Notre Dame, my parents both worked, but even with the two of them working, they couldn't afford to. Um, send me here. So I worked and applied for loans. I understood the challenge that it takes to have someone come here. I also realized the incredible benefit of being here. They are going to take the bar in Georgia. Okay. After I left, I, I thought, you know, one day I'm going to try to make it possible for somebody else to come here. We are given the, the challenge to make a difference um, in, in every way we can. And we're given the challenge to create opportunities for people. But I'm able to, I will be giving back. I will be how Mr. Bellotti and his family was to my family, I will be that. By representing Notre Dame, I think giving back to the community with the best thing I can do, everything is possible. It's just a matter of setting your priorities straight. To the University of Benefactors, I say thank you. I say it's hard to put in words the value of your gift. There's the financial terms that you've given as a benefactor, but it goes beyond the finances. I, I think you change lives. I feel extremely blessed to have had the opportunity to go to Notre Dame, considering I come from a low-income family. My mom, she'd worked so hard, and. All five of us went here. I wouldn't be who I am without her. She's like everything I want to be when I grow up. I am very grateful to the Almighty God and to the many people that have made it possible. I think Notre Dame's opened a lot of doors for me, and it's a great opportunity. Every time I go to the front door of their home, um, I remember putting that door um, on that house. And I thought about the family walking through that door, having their own home. And I think the door here at this university was open to them, and that, in a way, Notre Dame has opened doors for them and will continue to do that all their lives. Great story. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Kathy and Frank Bellotti. Hi, Kathy. How you doing? Good. Hey, Frank. Come on, have a seat. Well, my gosh, that is some, some story. Incidentally, Frank is from the same hometown I'm from, the Bronx in New York City. Huh? 
And we, brought, and we made it, didn't we? Fantastic. <laughs> well, when you finished uh, building that house for the Habitat, did you have any idea you were building a, a future for this family? You know, Kathy and I have been uh, involved in Habitat for a long time. And after we built this house, we built another 350 houses. So all in all, we probably house about 2,000 children. And, and every time you do a dedication, you think, these are opportunities that we're creating for these kids, but we're never going to know these kids as they grow up. Mm. They're going to go off and do something, and, but you have to be hopeful, and you have to have the faith that they're going to do something special. But we should have known after meeting Lucy that we were going to be involved in their lives. And so here we have five great examples, five of our new children uh, that we can see grow up, and we can see the difference it's made in their lives, and, and we can see the difference that it's made to Notre Dame and the difference Notre Dame has made in their lives. And of course, they've made a difference in ours. They keep renewing our faith that this is a great thing to do. Sure, I'll bet. My gosh, five of these kids in school and through the whole thing. It's and, fabulous. Uh, and of course, you know, Maggie's in, in law school and, and Laura's going to med school and Teddy just completed his MBA. He's out working for Intel and, and the two girls are still here. So they haven't quit. I mean, they're going to pay it forward. Well, you must feel very proud that uh, we are. The Bellatis have made this happen. Can you describe what it means to you personally that uh, the family has been able to accomplish so much in their lives? Well, I, somebody asked me once, uh, you know, what do you consider the greatest achievement in your life? And I said, you know, there was this nine-year-old boy in Atlanta who hugged my neck the day we dedicated his house. And um, about 13 years later, he was sitting in my class. Mm. And um, the thought of watching uh, a young man grow up, you know, leaving a homeless shelter, moving into a home, and then all these years later sitting in my classroom was an enormous uh, achievement. So um, they have really reminded us of all the different ways we love Notre Dame. Sure. And um, so it's, it's, a, it's a great achievement. It sure is. Well, now, you've had tremendous impact in many areas of uh, the university. In addition to scholarship assistance, uh, you fund a program in social entrepreneurship at the Business School, which is such a beautiful school right, right here. Uh, Frank, I know you're also an adjunct professor. Uh, and Kathy, I know you're very interested in the campus spirituality. And recently, you were involved in, in a, a new book about the chapels here on campus. How many chapels are there? There are 57 chapels, Regis. We learned that fact um, and on a fly-out weekend with Father Jenkins, and we're so struck by the fact that we had never known that after 40-something right. years of coming mm -hmm. to campus. And after saying the rosary with another beautiful couple that was with us, we were inspired to really make that into something that would celebrate the chapels, celebrate Notre Dame, and another way for us to give back to the university. Sure. So the, um, when I brought a book for you, yeah, like and I signed it for you. Oh, so. nice. <laughs> the chapels at Notre so Dame. Read, yes. Yes. Did you go to each one? I did not personally, but uh, the, the wonderful author, Larry Cunningham, and the beautiful photographer, Matt Kashour, did visit every, every chapel. Well, I remember going down to my chapel, in Zom Hall, the first chapel, okay. first year. And uh, they would have a football player at the, uh, at the uh, door to mark you showing up. Oh. And this guy was a uh, uh, fullback from Chicago, and he was a little on the wild side. So in addition to getting your name checked off that you were there for mass, he would also give you a punch in the arm. Oh, my God. <laughs> <clears throat> Well, I promise if you go visit all of those, that won't be the case anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Del Gander's gone. He's no longer there. But thank you. It's a lovely book, The Chapels of Notre Dame. It's well, great. in addition to celebrating the chapels, yeah. um, it also, I think, really speaks to the legacy of those people who came before us. Mm -hmm. And as a result, we're able to visit all those chapels and have it as part right. of our, our daily life here at sure. Notre Dame. What would you like your, your legacy to be here at Notre Dame, you too? I, I have to, um, at the end of my at the end of my class at the end of every semester, I um, I say to the to the students um, this little benediction: "You are a song we sing to a place we'll never see. You are a poem we write to a world we'll never know. But I'm thankful today because we have placed the world in your hands, 
And I think part of the legacy that we like to leave is the notion that um, we have found ways to love this university. We hope we find new ways to love the university, but, but we have placed that confidence in the hands of young people who will do great things in the world even though we won't get to see them. And it's a great feeling of satisfaction, I'm sure, on your part. It really is. Absolutely. Now, Frank and Kathy, we know Notre Dame can never thank you enough for all your devotion and loyalty to our school. But there are three young people here today who would like to have the chance to uh, thank you for helping change their lives. Three of the, let's see. Oconoqua? Oconoqua girls. <laughs> here they come. Yes. <laughs> How you doing, ladies? Regis? A little kiss? <laughs> Something? Something? Forget about the Bilates. I'm here. <laughs> Congratulations. It's a really a great, great story. But, but first of all, tell us your names. Who's who? I'm Selena O'Connor. I'm a You're senior. Selena? Yeah. I'm a senior studying science pre-professional, and I live in PW. Uh -huh. I'm Precious, I'm the baby. I'm currently a junior studying psychology and sociology, double major, <laughs> and I live in Brain Phillips. You know that, that name, Precious? Precious? That was my nickname here. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> what about I'm you? I'm Laura Oconoqua. Um, Laura? I graduated in 2010, and I was a science business major, and I was an RA at Paymore. Terrific. <laughs> this, 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 this is great stories right here. So when, when the Bilates entered your lives, what did you think? Did you think that, well, it's going to lead to, to great things? It's going to lead to Notre Dame of all places? Not instantly. At first, I mean, I didn't know them very well because we were young and you sure. see a lot of people and you're just like, hi. <laughs> so we were always taught to be polite. It wasn't until like, you know, when the education really started kicking in and that was like middle school that like they really, really were just always around and Mrs. Bilotti was just the sweetest little thing. <laughs> <laughs> Every time we go to her house, she's always giving us something, something sweet and I just, I don't know, they're great. <laughs> so if you enjoy your stay here at Notre Dame, what, 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 what's, what is your favorite memories? What will it be when you leave? Well, my favorite memory, of course, is the grotto. Every time we come here, if it's like, if, if we land at 10 o'clock at night, my mom is always like, y'all wanna go to the grotto? <laughs> <laughs> so we always make that our first and last stop here, and she always reminds us to always go there, pray for our family, which includes Mr. and Mrs. Bellotti and their family, and to always thank God for what we have and how mm. far we've come. It's terrific. Yeah, the grotto was a very special place, you know, and once, well, it's going to be tough to leave here. Do you feel it? Yes. You're I'm, the senior, yeah, right? Yeah, I'm about to graduate, and I'm, like, already, like, getting sad. And, like, senior year, and I'm, like, already sad about, like, having to graduate and start my life, really. Because, <laughs> 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 like, Notre Dame is, like, a, like, I feel at home here, so safe here. But I'm being in the real world, and there's no other, like, I want to go to med school, but there's no school like Notre Dame, so yeah. I'm just going to be all alone. Yeah, but you're, <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be fine. So is there anything you'd like to say to the Bilates? I just say it, tell us right now. How do you feel about Words it? Words really can't express how grateful and thankful we are for them. It's like, I don't, I don't know, like we have came so, so far. Nothing would have been possible without them. When I say nothing, I mean absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. Like my mom, she came here, she didn't know much about, I mean, she always knew the word education. I, she just didn't know much about schools and like where to go to. And like, it's just whatever we need, we pick up the phone, call, and he's like, is that what you're calling me for? Like, you don't have to call me for that. Like, just, just take it, get whatever you want. And it's just, I, I, I really, really, really don't know how to express and say like how thankful we are for them. Like, I mean, I have never had a father and. And he's it, huh? And yeah. he's a good one. Yeah. Never had a father. And Mrs. Milani is just like the second mom. Well, here we all are, having fun. <laughs> Do 
We cried. We laughed. We loved. Really proud of you. Very proud of you. And so proud of you, Frank. Thank you. Kathy, thanks. Thanks so much. All right.